Welcome to Standish, Maine. Population 10,000. It borders Maine's second largest lake, Sebago Lake, on its south shore. It is also home to the old Red Church, built in 1804. We met up with Charles Ruby from the Standish Historical Society. So join Mars as we investigate the old Red Church. Welcome to the Old Red Church. My name is Charles Ruby. I'm the curator here for Standish Historical Society. And let me tell you a little bit about the, about the place as we go through and sure. as you do your exploration. I'll give you a bit of the history background of the church. Okay, so Standish was founded in 1754. In 1766, they built their first church down where Route 25 meets 35 in town. Mm -hmm. Then in 1804, they decided they need a new church in town. So this land is given by the Reverend. Daniel Merritt, and they build this new church in 1804 using some of the timber from the original 1766 church. So as we go through the church, it had pretty much three uses. It was used as a meeting house. When it was first built, it was a simple meeting house. And then it was also a church at that time, a congregational church. Then in the 1830s, the church split. Mm -hmm. and half of the congregation started a new church at Standish, Standish Congregational Church and the other more con liberal half stayed here the conservative half went down the road <laughs> <laughs> so the liberal half was lowering in their numbers and they needed something to bring in income and in town they wanted to have an academy a private school and that's when they decided to put this, take the second floor into the academy and the academy was here from 1848 to about 1852 when there was a big scandal and one of the trustees ran off with all the money that was in the academy uh, accounts. And the church was unused for several years until 1893 when upstairs becomes the first high school in Standish. And it was Standish High for almost 20 years. So let's go in this way and we can see some of the original features of the church. Here we have the same box pews that were there since it was building in 1804. Mm -hmm. And interesting facts about the pews is they're numbered. They're numbered up to 54. We only have 42 remaining. See right here is number 33. They're numbered and each family actually owned the pew that they sat in. And that was real property, so that could be passed down from generation to generation. And you also were taxed on it. <laughs> wow, I got a kick out of that. That, yeah, is, that is very interesting. Just, just, wow. like, just like property. Wow. Just like property. So there's also <laughs> not only a uh, tax on the pew, but there's also a church tax when this place was first opened that every member of the community had to pay their church tax to help support whatever churches in town. And there was just one church in this town at the time, the Congregational Church, mm -hmm. which was the official church of the state of Massachusetts, which Maine was part of mm -hmm. until 1820. And so this church tax went on into the disestablishment in the 1830s. So it was the center of everything. You did town meetings in here. So there was obviously at some points heated arguments in this room mm -hmm. where they would sometimes on the poll, polls here, they post up votes. So you can imagine the political climate, they're all yelling and back and forth. Mm -hmm. We don't want to do this, we want to do that. And then on Sunday service days, you come in in the, in the morning, 
for service, and you come right this way. We'll pick a nice pew up here. Pew 25. You step right in there. And the Reverend who had been standing up there, now keep in mind, in 1806, 1807, this is all opened up. So there's two balconies around. Those are actually balconies, right. So it was two stories straight up, and the pulpit, the original pulpit, would have been about where the crucifix is now, where the cross is. So the Reverend's right up there in the center. He's giving his wonderful sermon, and they're pretty much the service consists of sermons and prayers, readings from the Bible. And for that, you'd have to stand. So go ahead and stand up and say what's going on and on. This is the neat thing about this one, these innovations that people came up with. And so if you try just to lean back against this, you say it's uh, can't quite, not quite comfortable. If you notice, your seat is hinged. Mm -hmm. uh, hinged seats. There. Yeah. Now when you're going on for a few hours, you have the advantage. Yeah. That's, I was wondering what it was really. Yeah, that's interesting. So during the sermon, you'd have to stand up the whole time? Not the whole time. No. Parts, of the, parts of the service you stand up, parts you would sit. Mm -hmm. But it was an all-day event. Oh, yeah. That's what they just, didn't you say they break for like a lunch? They break for lunch, come, come back, back more in the afternoon. And this is a time when this was the one break you had a week from regular chores and business work and farm work that you were doing. So you could put things down and come to service. So it was kind of strict, but in another way it was an actual break from the heavy work that was done every day. Other things you could do to your pews, you could dress them up the way you wanted to. So as we go around, you can see some actually have carpet fragments still left in them. People bring carpeting in. Mm -hmm. They would bring in, for elderly relatives, rocking chairs. We have one of those upstairs. <laughs> and some of the pews, as you go around, you'll see they customize them, and they put little shelves on them, inside of them. Oh, the, like the, these ones over here. Right. right. Exactly. That's so interesting. So, that, so this was when? Time frame? So this was used as a church. 18, 1804. 18, it was built 1804. So we're a church and meeting house. Um, 1804. Until 1860, when it was last used as a church. Hmm. So it goes from being Congregationalist, and then it dwindles down. They become Unitarian. When the split becomes... When they did the split, so is that the church I saw up here? Exactly, that's the church okay, you saw up there. I was yep. the tenth I thought that was that church. So they had that split, and then they did other things. They <coughs> had the academy in here. That's when they added the tower you see outside with the bell. Mm -hmm. All that was added later on. So when this was first, the Congregational Church, it was very much out of that Puritan ethic. So the pews never got painted. But at first, if you're coming here when it was brand new and ready to use, the walls would not have been finished. There would have been plain walls with no plaster, no paint on the wood walls. Most likely, these posts you see here would not have this carving in them. This is from this been a straight post, as much austerity as you can get. So it's just stand, say your prayers, be religious, <laughs> pay your respects. And even music wasn't allowed here until like 1820s. Wow. When they finally voted to allow that. Wow. Any when other questions? Did you say the academy? The academy was 1848 to about 1852. And that was interesting because it was a private school situation. So you paid per lesson, and the lessons were 11 week terms. So something like writing was $3. <laughs> And they had languages. They had someone here offering French and German languages. Times changed a little, I guess. So. And then they had writing classes, um, drawing, arts, and then music was six dolls. That was the most expensive course oh, wow. you could take. Exactly. The six doll music class. Well, that's and the devil thing, you know. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the, the devil thing. There's a old story that goes back when the first meeting house got torn down. It was this place has been completed, so there's a new meeting house. But down in Standish, there was the militia 
and the militia was what they call mustering, so they were practicing. And they got a bit thirsty, and this is the early 1800s, when you get thirsty, the best thing to drink is rum, why not? So they all had quite a bit to drink, and they have at the old meeting house, and they tear it down, piece by piece. And they're just knocking the whole place down, and then the justice of the peace, the local authority comes and actually reads the riot act. So there's an actual riot act that was read back then. Hear ye, hear ye, I do claim you are all in violation of the act of rioting. <laughs> so that was broken up. And in standards, there's a famous poet named Thomas Shaw. And he would write these broadsides and he'd publish them himself and he'd sell them all along the coast. And you actually can find some of the National Archives in Washington, D.C. still today. Hmm. Um, we actually have one, one upstairs. And he, one of the great things about Shaw's poetry is what he wrote. He wrote about historical events that happened back in the day. So he wrote about this tearing down the meeting house. And one of his, his quotes is he's essentially saying that Satan has his way with Standish that day. <laughs> and that the town people served him well. <laughs> So that was kind of interesting. He really blasted them yeah, for right. tearing down the old meeting house. Oh, yeah. Okay. But as I mentioned, some of the timbers, some of the big timbers that are in this building were right. taken from the old meeting house. Mm. Interesting. Pretty big into the history of the town. Yes. <laughs> You're a history buff, aren't you? Uh, yes. <laughs> you said you, you've been running this now for what, four years? Four years, yes. And you had mentioned to me that... Um, there was someone else that had spent a lot of time here, and don't say any names. Right. And um, so I told these guys, and they, they don't know the name, and so I'm just curious if anybody comes up with the yes, name, the, name. So that would be interesting. And uh, yeah. yeah, I was thinking about that myself. There's there's lots of names that can be connected here. Mm -hmm. There's lots of artifacts. We have artifacts of people. We actually have a wedding dress that was worn by a woman who was married in this building. Hmm. We have a graduation gown from one of the high school students who was here. Hmm. We have um, notebooks. We have books that they used in class. So there's so many connections. Uh, the upstairs collection of Standish memorabilia or things from Standish. Let's, why don't you take us upstairs? Sure, let's, let's take a look upstairs. So when this became the academy, they added the two staircases. We're going up to the boys' side. It was traditional to have the boys and girls separate as they came into um, classes. So should we force the girls to go all the way to the other side? <laughs> it would be proper. So up here, this is what was the academy, then the high school, and then in 1975, it's taken over by Standish Historical Society. And for the last 41 years, we've been collecting things related to Standish history. So we have all sorts of artifacts of things people use in everyday life. And we also have manuscripts that go back into the late 1700s. Letters, diaries, uh, just a treasure trove of things. And a lot of times folks will come up here doing some genealogical research. Mm -hmm. And they'll go into this room here and our, go through our boxes and look for connections to their family. Oh. Mm -hmm. So this room was used in the high school days as a science room. Oh, okay. So we had this, they had a sink and we know they did chemistry experiments in here. Mm -hmm. And some biology in here. And now it's set up with artifacts that people used at home in Standish. So, stoves from Edna Libby, whose name is on a school down there. Right, and then the school, yeah. So, yeah. Wait, that name yeah. Like the school. so right. names on things will, if people from town come in, it's like, oh, that, I knew that. There's a connection there. Right. Um, oh, so you said that was her stove? Or something? That was her stove. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah, interesting thing. So we have things that go way back to like the pewter set there that was used as a community set in the church downstairs. Oh, that was part of the, yeah. set the church. Oh, neat. And then things all the way up to dishes from the 1930s. This place is amazing. All sorts of family Bibles. Oh, that's what these are, huh? Hmm. Then come back this way. This is the the aha room. <laughs> aha. It smells like books. <laughs> yeah. So this was the classroom. This is where Standish High School happened. And this group of desks on this side 
These are directly from when it was Standish High, have not moved since. We have great evidence for that. On this desk, it's carved SHS 09 to 013. Oh, wow. Standish High School. So there were several groups of desks. This group and the group on the far wall were made in Standish. Those were kind of a homemade desk that were used in one-room schoolhouses. Right, okay. Yeah, uh, my mother's got one of these at her house. Yep. It's just like this. Classic, uh, late 19th century, you mail a room, yeah. and they ship them to you, and they come in parts. And so you get the sides, and you have to assemble them yourself. Hmm. There's one thing we got to watch out for. We don't get freaked out when we see manic. Right, because yeah. gets <laughs> <laughs> you know, like that, that one where they would make face. Yeah, the mannequins will get you. That's the creepiest. It's pretty awesome. Yeah. Awesome stuff. It amazes me that this house all the high school students. Well, right, if you come over here, you can see a picture of one of the graduating classes. This is the class of 1901. And then you uh, see the ladies in their formal wear, the men in their formal wear as they stand for graduation. That includes the teachers in the, in the picture. So you have a kind of a small the better name class. Yeah. Okay. And even when the first class was assembled in 1893, they wrote in the town reports, which you have the town reports way back before then. And I read through them. And it talks about how all these different students come from different one-room schoolhouses in Standish. There's over 15 different one-room schoolhouses. So they call them school districts. So there's over 15 different ones. So they're first grade through eighth grade, then they right. get through that. And most of the time, in turn of the century, Maine, you're not going to high school. It's right. kind of a rare event. Um, yeah. So That's what I was wondering, like, if it's just because most people didn't make it to high school. Right. That was most in the rural areas. You, you did eighth grade, you were doing pretty well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could have enough well, education to take over the uh, family business or the farming business. So when this opens up, they can't even put them into freshman, sophomore, and senior years. They have to uh, kind of let it ride for a year to figure out who's at what right. space. We should be doing and then the next year they're able to align them and they only have a three year term, uh, three years to get through high school when they first open it. And it wasn't until about 1900 where they got to the four year right. high school model up here. One of the interesting things was I did talk to another group that had been in here, and they said that they didn't really capture a whole lot of stuff here, but they did say the globe actually moved, so that's something we should try to take a peek at tonight and keep a camera on or something, maybe see if it, sure. see if it moves or anything. But, so. We have all these photo albums, these scrapbooks that we keep up every year. Every winter, a group of volunteers is collecting and categorizing. So we have obituaries going back for decades that are done by alphabetically. We have, if something happens in town, it's a big event, we put it together. Things like the Schoolhouse Theater, Volume 1, anything we get on them. So we're just continually trying to collect Standish history as we go along. Mm -hmm. And then if you pan around, you see all these boxes around. These are all have been these are all full of manuscripts that have been categorized and sorted and cataloged. Okay. On the other neat thing in this room is after it closed, after the new high school opened down in Standish, in Sebago Lake, where the schoolhouse art center is, they still use this occasionally. And so at one time they decided to have some sort of contest, writing, oratory contest happen up here. And that was in 1916. And the results are still written on the board over there. That's the same oh, wow. writing from 1916. 1916 teachers. Oh, wow. yep. First prize, Mary Dressy. Mary Dresser. Dresser. Yeah, I had her daughter come in a few years ago. Really? Yeah. Interesting. To see her. We took a picture of her in front of her mother's name on the board. Great membership. Yes. <laughs> and here we have some of our best textiles or clothing displayed. Oh, wow. So, you know, you know, this over here, this is a wonderful wedding dress that was actually worn by uh, 
Mona Finney Hartford downstairs. What's your name? Mona Finney Hartford. Hartford? Yep. Oh, that's my last name. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Hartford's were big as Danish. They were, they were really, huh? They had a Hartford coat factory. They used to sit around the corner down there. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So they... Uh, to do some research. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so she wore this downstairs for her wedding that her daughter wore for her wedding. And wow. they were both married in the Old Red Church. Hmm. Interesting. And over here, this another picture of a graduating class, a smaller class. You can see here one of the graduation gowns that was worn. Oh, that's a graduation gown over here? Right. Wow. That's awesome. We arranged this, kind of reflecting all kinds of industry that happened in Standish throughout the years. Wow. Um, Standish was big in the apple business. A lot of apple farms happening in Standish. Mm -hmm. There was corn being grown in Standish at one time. It was a big crop for a while mm -hmm. until the Midwest developed and it kind of phased out. Uh, other interesting industries, you see this this ore here, which goes on for feet and feet all the way down there. This was actually used in the old Cumberland Oxford Canal that connected Sebago Lake to Casco Bay in the 1820s, 30s, and 40s. Right. And that, that used to run, so they run into Sebago Lake, then they'd also go up through the, the locks. Up through the locks, yeah. The Long Lake. Long Lake. All the way to Harrison. Correct. Which we were just in Harrison at, at the last investigation. Was oh, we yeah. Into Harrison. Yeah. Nice, yes. But,
said there was a guy that used to run this for many years, right? It, it was a man named Dean Hitchcock. But when you say the word, you say the name Daniel? Yeah. That has an even stronger meaning here. Really? So that you? <laughs> <laughs> so who was Daniel? Daniel was the Reverend Daniel Barrett, who donated the land for this to be built on. And wow. he was the first minister here. Wow. <laughs> so if you find box number seven, that was his pew that his family owned. So we're in box seven, right? Well, the thing is, Barrett. Hmm. What do you think of that, Dan? That's kind of crazy, actually. <laughs> I was a little debating on myself whether or not it was a, a simple guess or any kind of intuition behind it. Is anyone here? Can you move something for us? Somebody standing behind the man in the back of the room. If somebody is there, touch him. That's you, go and touch him. Tap on the shoulder. Wow. Just like you did. See what is it? No. I think it's like a red now. You seeing with him? Can someone stop twice if there's a door behind me? Thank you. 
If someone can go find out if there's a, um, like a breeze coming through that door and just stop twice if they feel anything. Thank you. 
line. Again. If you are standing right behind him, can you move to the other side of him? Where are you going, Casey? Um, I'm going to go over here or over here. Peace out, these routes. All right, so now we got Casey's going to try it. vibration in my feet. Are you guys walking around? Shine the light at me if you're walking around. Walking around? Yeah. Wow. I'm feeling in my feet a vibration. It's 
like, I mean, obviously this was a school, but it's almost like a bunch of feet running, trying to get to their seat almost. My whole feet are vibrating. So where did the Old Red Church fall on our haunted rating scale? Let's find out. We rated the Old Red Church a banshee haunt due to the activity we found and intelligent responses of EVPs and photographic evidence. Remember, we, we believe, believe you. you.